the Mind of Basketball Podcast, also known as the MLB Podcast. I am Evan. And I'm John. Oh, and this is the Mind of <laughs> That's our Basketball Podcast, where we recap, break down, and analyze players and teams from the previous games from the previous day. How are you this Monday afternoon, Ja? I'm good. <laughs> what, is, what are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> You think you're in a circus? <laughs> Probably I am. <laughs> you're not Heath Ledger. <laughs> like, what is this? I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, I'm done. I'm, I'm done. Yeah, there we go. I'm about to end it already. <laughs> <sighs> I hope everyone has a good day. I hope everyone will have a good day. Uh, in terms of basketball, not a lot of happened. Last night, I mean, it was more more of a football night, you know. I'm gonna set Tom Brady in the Super Bowl again, but nonetheless, <laughs> we're not talking about football. We are talking about basketball, and even though not much happened, things still did happen at the same time, and we will discuss it. Starting with the game at one o'clock early in the early in the afternoon, which featured the Toronto Raptors and the Indiana Pacers. Um, Alari was out. Siakam was out. The Raptors didn't play like they were out. <laughs> Raptors got out to an early lead and looked like they maintained it throughout the entire game up until late in the third quarter where the Pacers started picking up steam. And then in the fourth quarter where they actually took the lead and, and came back. But the Raptors, their defense, and Fred Van Vliet and OG Ananobi really stepped up and closed out this game and was able to beat this Pacers team 107-102. So your thoughts first? Well, just like what you said within that whole statement right there, it, it was all about defense this whole game from both teams. Both teams was doing it well on the defensive end. Miles Turner had like six blocks in the game. Um, yeah. Whole team defensive effort in terms of both sides. Sabonis struggled from the field. Yes. But, in um, the second, especially in the second half. Yeah. But, but that's credit to the, I'll talk about that. Yeah. But again, it was just defense all around, and then it became, and then it became a thriller down the stretch in that fourth quarter, and was just like you said, Fred Van V, OG, and Anobi came up big. Brogdon was doing well. Turner, Turner was still being a valuable production. Yes, Turner really had a great game. So, it it was just great, but yet, um, just mistakes from Indiana cost them the game down the stretch at this moment, and the Raptors were able to capitalize. Mm -hmm. mistakes down the stretch the turnovers was really crucial and why the Raptors won but like I said that is credit to the Raptors defense specifically almost like how they played Giannis a couple years ago in the Eastern Conference Finals and when they went when they won that series and went to the finals and eventually won the championship they had a boxing one on Sabonis and basically mm -hmm. what a boxing one is basically all five guys I <laughs> the guy who has the ball and just make sure that he doesn't do anything in terms of scoring. Yeah. You know, you that that type of style, that type of defense forces bad shots and forces turnovers. Exactly. And they also double teamed him. It get, within that system, it's also double teaming. There, there were certain moments in which they really try to double team Sabonis in order to get the ball out of his hands. Mm, yeah, so Bonus, he really struggled. I mean, everybody, like, every time he got the ball, you could see all the Raptors players just turn. Just look. <laughs> and everybody was eyeing him. You know, and every time he tried to get in the rhythm in terms of post-up, you saw another guy come, like you said, double team. Sometimes it looked like it was a triple team, not too much of a triple team, but like he was like playing it off. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah see, like, you know, having a little bit of space, but still yeah. there at the same time. Yeah. And that's yeah. and that's how they played the bonus, and it worked. Yeah. yeah. And he really struggled. Second half, he had as much points as we did. <laughs> like, He's like lying. yeah he did have the same amount of points as we did <laughs> yeah but the reason why the Pacers got back to this game is um they did a good job with Brogdon but they couldn't contain Brogdon as as much yeah. as he was a bonus and Miles Turner hit some big threes down the stretch along with um Jeremy Lamb who hit that big three to take the lead yeah, yeah. and Justin Holiday also had a a little good game too, stepping up. But you know, you need your best player to, you know, produce some some big time buckets. And 
they weren't able to do that. And they also weren't able to stop the Raptors late game. Yeah. In terms of OG and Fred Van Vliet. And that's how the Raptors were able to win this game. Yep, you said it all right there. Yep. Well, finally, it looks like the Raptors are finally getting to that little groove, getting into that little rhythm. You know, still a couple more games till they reach 500. Don't but I will be on the lookout because the way they playing is well, the way they were playing is sad. But now it looks like they stepped it up. So I have my eyes on them. So a good win by the Raptors team, and hopefully for the Pacers' sake, the Pacers will be able to, to um. Yeah, let's hope they can rebound get and step yeah. up in the next game. Yeah, let's hope that the that the Raptors could get back into that cold because that Florida weather ain't doing them justice right now, man. Yeah, that's all I gotta say. All right, the next team that we'll be discussing featured the Milwaukee Bucks and the Atlanta Hawks. The Atlanta Hawks without Trey Young and Clint Capella, so obviously the Bucks won. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't that simple. Uh, the Bucks got out to an early lead as well, just like the Raptors did, but more of a bigger lead, and it looked like they was going to hold on, but then in that third, yeah. the Hawks came back and fought back hard, yeah. played well, and John Collins had a good game. Mm-hmm. But, of course, you're missing two key players, and you're going against the reigning MVP and arguably the best team in the East, so you know, it's just going to be hard to win to game, and that's what it was, really, and that's basically how it went. The Bucks won. Exactly, just what you said right there. The Hawks were down by, I would like to say by 20, 20, 21. Yeah. Down the stretch. And then that third quarter hit and they gained new life. And just like you said, John Collins was doing well. Um, DeAndre Hunter, Cam Reddish, like they, yeah. like, and about, yeah, Hunter, Hunter had a good game as well. Yeah. And you saw the veteran presence from, from Rondo. And, and I, Nah, I don't think Colin Irish played. I'm bugging. Sorry. No, he didn't play. But outside of that, wait, 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 wait. Yes, he did. <laughs> well, he did. So I, I saw my bugging. Okay, as I was saying. Um. So, but yeah, so you sort of get gain new life. But yet, it just, it, it just was. <laughs> hey, you just, hear what I said? Did you? Yes, I heard what you said. You said oh. that. <laughs> like that. Look it. And it looked like they gained new life, but yet they were never able to get out of the double-digit deficit, though. They were still in a double-digit deficit, even though they were able to fight back to... to Because they it's better to lose by 10 than we lose by 20. Let's just be honest. But they still lost by 10. So... 14. 14. But at the end of the day, they was able... Even though they was able to bridge the gap, mm-hmm. it, was still a, it was still a good deficit that away. It was still a good yeah. deficit away. And from the Bucs' perspective, I mean, this is pretty much basically a good team win. Um, Bobby Portis had a really good game coming off the bench. He really stepped up, came out of nowhere, helped him to secure this win. But, you know, the same people that you expect to play well. Mm-hmm. Giannis did his thing. Um, Middleton did his thing. You know, Lopez and Holiday, of course. So just a great all-around win for the Bucs. Uh, the Hawks weren't at full strength, but you see how well they still play. And you see how competitive they still can play. And you know they were on three game winning streak when they had when when they healthy in the past three games. So I'll be interesting to see how the Hawks play in the next few games when they get Trey Young and Clint Capella back and when they have their lineups. Because now Rondo, you know, Rondo's playing and now he looks like he's getting to a rhythm. Gallo's there, so yeah. it'll be interesting how the Hawks can form that team and make a push. I I, I got faith in them, not quite. Mm-hmm. But we shall see. Mm-hmm. All right. A lot of the games that happen around the league, well, like four, but anything that you want to talk about, anything that you want to go over, I'll let you talk. Um, I watched the Hornets versus Magic game, and that was a really good game, especially coming down the stretch. Um, say this, um, the Magic had it going in the beginning. Fournier was balling. Um, Yusevich was balling. And they were able to have a comfortable lead going down. And then the fourth quarter hit and it just looked like the Hornets just had that quarter right in the bag and Gordon hey you got to make an apology to someone bro I'm sorry you just got to make an apology Gordon Hayward was really like you know he I'm telling you what they what they call it like a four-year five-year multi-million dollar contract like he was balling and he had the game winner (laughs) I will give credit 
to Gordon Hayward. Yes, he has been trying to live up to that, what, $67 million, I believe? Yeah. Or something like that. So, you know, I will hold on to my apology until the end of the season. Because <laughs> I want to see how well he plays and how well this one team plays down the stretch. So I'll save my apology. But I do admit, yes, he's as a, he has been playing kind of like an all, at an all-star level. Mm-hmm. And he has been trying to get back to that Utah Jazz days and when he was supposed to be, when he's supposed to make that next up right before that injury. catastrophic injury. So, yeah, I, you know, I give credit when credit is due. Yeah, the, but, yeah, the, let's just emphasize, the again, the second half, specifically the fourth quarter, everybody coming down the stretch. It wasn't just Hayward. It was Graham. Ball had a good game. Rosier came up with a big shot. Like, it was just those guys right there coming down the stretch that helped. That like you know you seen again you this whole Hornets team is based off of energy. They're specifically an offensive based team, but they're always built with energy, and you could see it coming down the stretch. Oh well, coming down throughout the game, I think it was going to eventually have a kind of situation like this in which you felt like they were going to come back. And Lord and behold, I was correct. They, they came back and had a game winner. <laughs> so, yep. <laughs> Props to the Hornets. Uh, of course, the Magic still disappoint. <laughs> but credit to the Hornets. Credit to Gordon Hayward. And hopefully, some, can some team just go on like a – can they win seven out of three in their last ten? Can some team just do that? You know? Well, maybe the Hornets can be that team. <laughs> we shall see. Uh, the Wizards played last night for the first time in a few weeks. And new flash, the defense still sucks. Uh, <laughs> the Spurs played them and dropped 121 points on them. No surprise. Everybody had it going from the Spurs perspective. And when I mean everybody, I mean everybody. <laughs> like, yeah. let me, if I'm correct, uh, the Spurs had <laughs> seven players in double figures. <laughs> so, I mean... <laughs> What can you do? The Wizards, of course, Bradley Beal balled out as usual. West Westbrook didn't really have the best of games. So that really resulted in their loss. I just want to speak about the Wizards real quickly because we haven't seen them in so long. So I just wanted to give a little update to them that, yes, they are still the same Wizards. Bradley Beal doing everything, and their defense still terrible. Exactly. And, and look, at I made the point, and you just emphasized it right there, the, the problem, the hole just now. It's probably a small or big hole, depending on how you look at it. But Westbrook didn't have a good game. And I made the prophecy last time that I said the Wizards will only do good. Their defense is horrible. The Wizards will only do good if Westbrook puts up more numbers in the scoring category instead of trying to do everything else on the court. They will be successful. We see the impact he has when he's scoring the basketball. So for him to have a game like this, no wonder they lost. Of course, when your defense is struggling and he, he, and he only scores nine points, down, what else do you want? Do, what else do you expect? They, of course they're going to lose again. <laughs> I'm sorry, Bradley Bell. Yeah, just disheartening. <laughs> well, on to other news. The Knicks had played the Trailblazers, and, of course, the Trailblazers, CJ still out. And going up against Melo, Melo's former team, and a little update or a little reference. Today is, I believe, the day that from a few years ago, 2015. That's when he did it? No, 20. 20- I think it was 2014. Yeah, 2014, 2014, sorry. But 2014, Melo had that famous 62-point game in the Garden, which is the Knicks' all-time um, record performance, most points in Knicks history in a game. Just out there balling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just doing everything. I remember that game like it was yesterday. <laughs> yeah. And he was he was so hot, he, just, he made a half-court shot <laughs> at <laughs> halftime. That's how hot he was. You, you could just tell. When you have it going, you got it going. And poor Michael Kidd Gilchrist. <laughs> yeah, they put him, they put him on Melo, and he was the obviously no match that night. Welcome to the NBA. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just a little historical reference that I want to say. Um, this was looked like to be a lopsided game, even though um, the Trailblazers didn't have CJ. They looked like they was on fire offensively. I mean, yeah. 70 first half points, and they was up 20 at halftime, and yet. The Knicks came back all the way, second half, and they was able to reduce it to four. Mm. You know, but some key possessions 
Come good defense in the Trailblazers late and Trailblazers knocking down their free throws. Closed out that game, was able to beat the Knicks by three. Good yeah. fight. Good yep. Fight then. Good fight in the Knicks. But can we get some wins, please? <laughs> can we stop lo- losing a few, winning a few, losing a few? <laughs> Matter of fact, can every team stop? You know, I, I, I keep saying that. So I'm just. All right. It's prediction times now. Rapid fire. A lot of games going on tonight. So we got to start with first. The 76ers or the Pistons? 76ers. Sixers. The Raptors or the Pacers? We just saw this game. <laughs> Pacers? Yeah. I got the, I got the Raptors. <laughs> the Hornets or the... We just saw this game. The Hornets or the Magic? <laughs> um, I got the Magic. The Magic. I got the Hornets. <laughs> I, I know you're about Shaq and Penny, but... <laughs> the first problem time again that we were going over features a rematch from two nights ago where the this team... Sorry, the winning team almost gave up the lead against this undermanned team, which is the Miami Heat up against the Brooklyn Nets. Who you have? Um, I got the Brooklyn Nets. The Nets as well. Well, this will be an interesting little matchup. Hopefully, well, the Lakers or the Cavs? <laughs> Lakers. Lakers. I said hopefully, I was going to say hopefully the Cavs can bounce back from their loss against the struggling Celtics last night. Without Tatum, by the way. <laughs> just, just want to throw that out there. They lost by almost 40. <laughs> they did. I see that. I saw the score. <laughs> Without Tatum, by the way. Oh, wait, I've mentioned that already. Sorry. <laughs> just wanted to clarify that. You know, you get two win- big wins against the Nets, and then you just lose to the struggling Celtics by almost 40. Without Tatum, by the way. <laughs> Wow, these two, well, a lot of teams been inconsistent. Um, but the Nuggets have been the Nuggets won the last two. I got the Nuggets. I feel like they got some. And the Mavs been struggling, and I don't think it's Porzingis. I think it's questionable. He ain't yeah. on decision, I believe. But um, yeah, I got the Nuggets. Yeah, yeah. Celtics are the Bulls. Uh, Kemba is not playing in that game, so yeah. I got the Bulls for upset. You got the Bulls for upset. Yeah, I got the Bulls for upset as well. The Spurs or the Pelicans? Pelicans. Spurs. I've been disappointed in how the Pelicans have been playing. The next yeah. primetime game we'll be discussing features the Timberwolves and the Warriors. Warriors. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's a, you just took the word right out of my mouth. And lastly, oh, this should be interesting. The Thunder or the Trailblazers? The Thunder. Oh, yeah, Thunder. Yeah, I mean, it's not a bad pick, but I got Trailblazers. I respect that. Well, all right. I think it's time to wrap things up. Any final thoughts? Uh, congrat- um, congratulations to Melo with that, with that, with that, with that performance way back. From from five six years ago. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it just it just goes to show he's one of the greatest pure scores to ever play this game, and yet people don't want to give him his due credit. Oh, uh, don't don't that. start with these it's novices of the game. <laughs> Casuals of the game, they've they probably never seen Carmelo in the Nuggets jersey. <laughs> Did not do the impersonation. You're like, bro, I know. I'm just, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> bro, I'm not gonna waste my time doing this and doing that. <laughs> I'm not gonna go back and watch YouTube highlights. <laughs> You came in with the you a bad guy. For anyone who doesn't know, I was just mocking um people when they say, you know, when you try to give them facts about basketball <laughs> stuff they don't know. That's all. Exactly. But um yeah. Oh, by the way, for correction, Mellow's 62 anniversary was yesterday. But oh. you know. Yeah, yeah. They're recording it now, so we have to mention it. So yeah, but our, my mistake. Yeah, anything else? No. All right. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching today's pod. Make sure you tune into tomorrow's podcast. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Make sure you also follow IG down in the description below. And once again, I'm Evan. And I'm Ja. And this is the Mind of Basketball Podcast.
Afghan var jag här då. 